So, again, good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Camille Toledo, and I will be presenting today a case of depression in an elderly patient entitled Take the Wheel. So, for my objective, uh, first is to present a case of major depressive disorder in a 67 year old male. And second, to discuss the role of telepsychiatry in the context of geriatrics mental health care. So let's get to know our patient. So we have Mario, a 67-year-old, married, a father of two, Catholic, a high school undergraduate. Uh, he is a retired driver and he is from Davao City. His chief complaint was insomnia. Uh, from the patient's words, dili ko katulog, or I can't sleep. And from his companion's words, who, uh, who was first, who was his son, um, said, gareklamo siya nga dili katulog do, or he is complaining that he can't sleep. For the premorbid personality, Mario is sociable and describes himself as the fun, funny man in a group. Uh, he claims to be a joker. Um, he is non-confrontational. He is slow to anger. His wife and his son described him as a hard worker, a good provider. However, he is often a pessimist and is easily discouraged and would keep problem to himself, problems to himself. For the history of present illness, two years prior to consult, Mario was forced to retire as a driver due to the restrictions brought about by the COVID pandemic. Initially, he didn't mind um, being confined at home as he viewed it as protecting himself and also his family from an unknown illness. However, as the months passed, Mario started to feel, feel stifled. He was not used to being um, to the prolonged inactivity, and he missed being um, he, he missed being productive, uh, as he was not also used to being dependent, especially financially. At this point, he and his wife were um, dependent uh, to his son. Um, with regards to their finances. And thoughts of being a burden started to linger in his mind. As a diversion, Mario started to grow uh, vegetables with a neighbor in an empty lot near their home. One year prior to consult, the pandemic drew longer. He started to question his worth as the head of the family. He would worry over little things at home. He would get irritable by um, small things, um, specifically noises from neighbors, uh, which he could tolerate in the past. He even uh, got into an argument with a neighbor because of this. He also complained of constant aches and easy fatigability, which he easily dismissed as uh, his body longing for to return to work. He said that dili anad akong lawas nga walay trabaho maungaluya ko per me. His companion uh, in his vegetable garden often hears him hear him saying kapoy na but um, the neighbor didn't think this was uh, anything serious. Form Four months prior to consult, um, his son married and moved out of the house. Um, Mario was happy about this, but uh, his son continued to finance them um, in their daily um, needs. Mario would often tell him that luoy na kaayo ka and um, still the thoughts of um, in uh, still the thoughts of uh, inadequacy was still in his mind at this time. He also um, started to 
rarely visit his vegetable garden and would often just lie down in the living room sofa. Three months prior to consult, he complained of being unable to urinate. His son noted this after he also heard a neighbor complaining the same thing. They decided to seek consult uh, as Mario was becoming distressed. He was, uh, during that consult, he was diagnosed with diabetes mellitus type 2 and was started on linagliptine and biclacide. Cool abdominal ultrasound was also done, which revealed normal results. However, a urinary catheter was still inserted to aid his voiding as he was um, distressed about uh, in, uh, the, the problems with, with urinating. After a few days, uh, the catheter was removed but was later on replaced after a few days as difficulty in voiding would recur. They made several ER visits to have a, the, a catheter inserted even with the assurance of the physician that it was not necessary. He would constantly complain to his wife and his son about his condition, but Mario also felt frustrated that he was becoming more of a burden. One month prior to consult, um, the above symptoms persisted, now associated with hopelessness. He would ask God that he would be he that um he would ask God that he be granted eternal rest as he was already tired of the many ER visits. He was complaining of not being able to urinate and out of his frustration, he took a knife and slashed his left wrist. He claimed that he could hear voices telling him to end his life. Fortunately, his son was at home and saw his father bleeding. Thus, uh, he took him to the ER and his wrist was sutured, and the catheter was again um, inserted to help him void. No referral to psychiatry was advised during this time. They were discharged with antibiotic medications and was advised to follow up after one week for, for possible suture removal. When they were back home, Mario claims that he regretted what he has done as it was considered a sin to commit suicide. His catheter was eventually removed during their follow-up and was, he was able to avoid without problems. His uh, antibiotics were extended though as his wound was still um, remained uh, non-healing and swelling was still apparent in the proximal tissues. He was observed to becoming more pessimistic when they're um, at one point, when their washing machine got broken, um, he constantly worried that his wife would be burdened and would look at it as his failure, uh, as his failure, and it would have been better that he was dead. Mario was now having problems with his sleep, and he became preoccupied with sleeping. That even uh, during uh, his uh, that even if he couldn't sleep during his siesta um, would worry him. He said that he felt weaker as the days passed. Worried because of Mario's wound and uh, as it was still not healing, his son brought him to another surgeon and was told that the cut was too deep um, and could have involved nerves and blood vessels, which explains why um, it was not healing well. Um, they were offered that uh, it be repaired. However, the cost was too much, thus, this, thus they declined it. They, uh, the antibiotics were then um, extended and um, a referral to psychiatry was now uh, was, was done um, due to the sleep problems and also the history of suicide. Um, when they consulted with a psychiatrist, he was, give, he was um, given an unrecalled diagnosis, uh, but was started with escitalopram at 5 mg per day, lanzapine at, also at 5 mg per day, and clonazepam 0.5 mg per day for his sleep. 
However, his sleep problems persisted and he would constantly complain about it. Due to, his, due to financial constraints, they decided to seek consult in this institution. For the past psychiatric history, um, patients... I'm sorry, Samir. Yes, but doc. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, I can't wait, but I need to clarify the history. Yes, Pa. Okay, so may I clarify? Uh, he was confined at home. Why was he confined at home? What was he sick of? Um, no, Doc, he was... Uh... Uh, due to the COVID restrictions, lang po, Doc, um, he was uh, staying at home. Po. Okay, so probably you should say not confined because when confined, yes, pa. parang may sakit. Um, yes. And then you, you, you mentioned that he had several, uh, several consults, but uh, there was no mention of the diagnosis and management. Um, for the... Um, uh, for the consult doc with regards the um, difficulty in, in urinating, um, he was diagnosed then, uh, lab work out, workups were done and um, uh, he was diagnosed with diabetes mellitus type 2 po, thus uh, linagliptin and glicoside was started. Um, for the uh, uh, whole abdominal ultrasound was also um, done during that time, but revealed normal results and um, no uh, what do you call this no intervention was done uh, aside from inserting the urinary catheter po, doc. Um, aside from that, uh, other labs were um, within normal. Uh, within normal results, uh, within normal values, po, Doc. Um, for the, the consult with the, um, the private surgeon po, for the wound, um, it was uh, diagnosed with a non-healing wound. Um, uh, the the, uh, the the son uh, whom I interviewed during this time though wasn't able to give the full diagnosis except for the the um, prognosis that the the surgeon gave and for the psychiatric consult though Wait, um, uh, okay thank you uh, we will deal with the psychiatric consult later on I, I would just like to get to know medically what was happening to this patient. So the patient does not know, even with a consultation, the reason why he has difficulty of urinating. No, po, Doc. So what was his reaction over that? He was frustrated about it, Doc, uh, because um, he kept um, the urinary catheter was... Um, uh, removed and then replaced after a few days, and it, uh, uh, it it, it uh, gave him frustrations, po, doc. Okay. Aside from being frustrated at having to have catheter and then having it replaced, uh, how about his um, how about his his thoughts about what is happening to him? Was he thinking of parang a self-diagnosis of something? Uh, what was his interpretation of what is happening to him considering that he was just told he had diabetes mellitus? But uh, no, uh, no explanation about why he cannot urinate. Uh, he, um, he did not, uh, I was not, able to ask him particularly about that doc he was uh he just mentioned that um he was also burdened about it and um he thought that that uh, uh, rather being burdened and also being a burden to the family doc. but i was not able to 
um, ask particularly with regards uh, what he thought was happening to him. So he was functioning well as a driver until yes. he had to stay at home because of the pandemic. Yes, but okay. Yes, so yeah, thank you. Thank you, Pado. Um, for the past psychiatric history, uh, the Mario suffered from insomnia since he was uh, working as a driver and would self-medicate with um, alcohol, approximately five standard drinks of beer to help him sleep. No history of suicide in the past. Um, the patient claims that he did not drink uh, during the times that he was driving. For the past non-psychiatric history, um, he had been recently diagnosed with diabetes mellitus 2 and on glycoside and linagliptin. No history of hypertension, seizure, thyroid disorder, trauma, or surgery. For the family history, uh, it's unremarkable. Um, also, no known family history from um, the maternal side of the family and uh, for the paternal side uh, it's also uh, unknown since his father he, he didn't know of his father since childhood for the family dynamics um, patient is currently living with his wife Tess um, and his daughter Jessa who is um, uh, who has uh, who is uh, who have intellectual um, disability? Jess, his son, a teacher, um, recently married Eileen and moved out of the house. His mother is deceased and his father is unknown. So, um, Mari's parents met in their hometown in South Catabato. His father was allegedly a scout ranger, while her mother was a farmer. However, the relationship did not continue as his father had other families aside from them. It was rumored that his mother was the ninth woman his father li lived with. Despite this, his mother considered Mario as their love child and poured him all her attention and love. Mario lived with his cousins whom her mother adopted and he treated, eh, whom he treated as his siblings. His mother provided for their family by farming um, and uh, Mario admittedly um, thought back that their finances was poor. Um, although they ate three times a day, uh, meals at times were not enough to be filling. He often had to help his mother with their farm, especially during times when he was off from school. He remembered that he didn't like farming um, that is why he started learning. Learn. Uh, he started to learn how to drive to escape this life. As a teenager, often goes with friends and started to get into vices. His mother would often get him or go to him whenever he wouldn't go home from his nights of fun. Ginasunod sunod sa ako mama. Uh, ginasunod sunod ko sa ako ang mama sa una. He loves and care for his mother and claims that he does not resent her. However, he wishes for male companionship, which he can get from his friends. Before he graduated from high school, he went to Davao and worked as a construction worker. Then um, he started his career as a driver. He met his wife uh, also in Davao City, and they returned to South Cotabato to form a family, start a family. He had to go back to Davao as his income was better in the city and left his family with his mother in the province. He would go home approximately um, twice a month to remit his income to his wife. He was absent while his wife was um, on labor as he, has, uh, as he was at work. Um, also, other family, uh, important family events, um, the patient would also be absent as he um, placed more importance on his work. When his mother died, 
Uh, in his late 30s, he moved his family to Davao and continued providing for, me, for them by means of his striving. They are already a growing family of four, thus he needed to make extra hours to provide enough for his family. Um, his motto, according to him, was to have their pantry uh, always fit, uh, to have their panty always be filled with food. Um, however, the decision, the decisions were usually, um, or the decision maker in the family was his wife, and he rarely supervised or disciplined his children as he was always at work. And when he was home, he would usually be, be resting. Although he finds time to eat dinner with his family whenever he is home, um, his interactions with them are limited. Um, but his son has high respects for him because of his hard work. Sorry. So for the personal and social history, um, Mario was the only child of his parents. However, he grew up with four other cousins whom he considered his siblings. He was born via a uh, normal spontaneous delivery at home, assisted by a traditional birth attendant. Uh, there, was a, there were no known um, postpartum complications reported. For the infancy, um, he was breastfed. Uh, but he had no recollection um, or information as to the duration um, of breastfeeding. His mother was the primary caregiver and provider for their family as his father had already left them. For the toddler period, he um, claims to have, uh, do not recall uh, this period in his life, and there was also no um, reliable informant. For the preschool years, um, Mario did not attend uh, preschool as it was not the norm at that time. His playmates were his cousins as they were from, um, they were far from other households. For the middle years, um, Mario started school at age seven. He recalled that his school was a distance away from their house and that he and his cousins, need, cousins needed to walk daily to get there. He had a lot of friends at school, um, but had average grades. Uh, at this age, he was already helping his mother in their farm, especially during the weekends. However, he didn't like farming and started to learn to drive from older friends. In his adolescent years, he um, started to spend more time with his friends drinking, which may, made her his mother worry. Um, he didn't finish high school um, due to financial constraints and because he wanted to already earn a living. He started to work in their farm, but due to the low income and uncertainty of um, uh, the income from the crops, he decided to uh, go to Davao as, and work as a construction worker and uh, eventually as a driver. He decided to, yeah. for his adult life, um, for the occupational history, um, Mario, as, as mentioned earlier, he started as a construction worker and eventually became a truck driver um, in his teens and early 20s. He then continued his occupation as a PUJ drive, a public utility jeepney driver and um, then as a taxi driver until the, the pandemic started. He is very dedicated to his job and this has been his bread and butter since then. He often misses family occasions like birth of his first child um, and um, other family gatherings. He would also miss family outings as he doesn't want to waste an opportunity for her for him to earn a live uh, for him to earn. He would be in the road for two days 
um, then come home to rest and sleep. Uh, he always starts his, his son said that he would always start his day at dawn and had never been um, a day that he was late. Uh, driving has been his only source of income throughout his adult life. For his sexual and um, marital and relationship history, um, Mario had one previous relationship prior to marrying his, his wife in his early 20s. Um, however, his wife was his first sexual relationship. During that time when his wife was in South Cotabato and he was in Davao City for work, he claims to have had several extramarital affairs uh, which he only told his wife recently. He said that he loved his children and he views them as a blessing. He was not vocal and expressive about his affection, but would show it by providing for his family and making sure that they had enough to eat. For the religion, Mario is a Roman Catholic but is not active in church. He believes in God and that suicide is a sin. For the social activity, often ch chats with neighbors and also uh, with his co-drivers. Uh, um, he usually have um, drinking sessions with, also with neighbors when he is at home. Um, however, he did not participate in any sport activities or um, gatherings and um, he also did not have any hobbies for the legal history uh, there was no there were no history of arrest no military history and he claims that he was never intoxicated with alcohol while he was driving for the finances the main source of income uh, for the family is from his um from his job as a driver. Uh, his son also contributed to the finances uh, when he uh, started working in his uh, college years and would partly pay for the bills. His wife is in charge of budgeting for the family and he leaves a small amount for himself for buying um, alcohol. For his hopes and dreams, uh, he hopes of being able to provide for his family until his old age and live comfortably. For the substance history, he denies using tobacco. Um, for alcohol, he started at the age of 13 due to peer pressure. Um, his, uh, he would usually drink around five standard drinks of beer. Uh, whenever he is home, so that's around um, uh, three to four, uh, three, uh, two to three times a week. Um, aside from his uh, drinking sessions with his friends at their barangay, so um, his last uh, intake was in uh, December 2021. He denied any use of cannabis, uh, stimulants, and um, other uh, illegal substances. Um, any questions for, for before I move to the mental status exam? Camille, just a clarification. So only when he started to, it was only two years, when he was diagnosed to have diabetes, before then, uh, there were no ano ba, laboratory or physic annual physical checkups. And, uh, it was only two years ago that he was diagnosed with diabetes. Hey, according to yes, doc, according to um, him and his son, Podo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, what is the weight of this patient? Um, the weight. Um, his weight was 49 kilograms. Though. He was underweight 
po with BMI of 18.2. Sorry, I did not get it. BMI of? 18.2, Doc. Ah, okay. okay. If um, there are no more clarifications or questions, um, I'll proceed to the mental status exam. So for the appearance, um, the first interview was conducted uh, via virtual um, telepsychiatry. So um, uh, at times there were problems with uh, the video quality during this time. So um, the patient's appearance, he was uh, seen um, lying in bed while the consult was ongoing. Uh, he was wearing a red t-shirt and shorts. Um, he had a thin appearance and he appeared older than his chronological age. Uh, there were there was note of a gauze on his right or left rather left wrist. For the behavior and psychomotor activity, he was calm and initially cooperative. Um, he didn't sit up during the consult as he was afraid of becoming dizzy. Um, he would look at the monitor um, when the camera is directed at him. Uh, there was no note of tremors or other movement disorders. He was initially cooperative to questions until um, the part, uh, the, the tests for concentration and attention um, for the MSE. Um, his mood was depressed with appropriate affect. He had mixed insomnia, um, no changes in appetite. He had no, also no diurnal um, variations. His, he had decreased libido. Um, attention was good. Um, he would direct his attention towards the camera when prompted. For the speech, um, he spoke in Visaya, uh, had a low tone of voice, but was coherent and comprehensible. He denied uh, perceptual disturbances at this time. He had linear thought process and goal-directed. He had persecutory delusions that his neighbors were talking about him. He was preoccupied with his sleep and had passive suicidal ideation. For the orientation, patient was oriented to the uh, to three spheres. Um, uh, he had impaired immediate memory, uh, and uh, for the concentration and attention, no formal testing was done as the patient had already uh, refused to um, participate during this time. Um, judgment was unimpaired and insight was partial. For the physical examination, the patient was awake, conscious, and not in cardiopulmonary distress. Uh, vital signs was done a day prior at a local center and ha uh, wherein the BP was noted at 130 over 80, cardiac rate of 90, uh, respiratory rate of 20 and temperature of 36.5 degrees centigrade. Uh, height and weight were not taken, um, or were not. Uh, they did not take the the height and weight during this this consult. So, uh, what was remarkable about um, the patient's physical exam was. Uh, uh, was in the extremities, uh, wherein there was a note of a non-healing wound on his left wrist, um, yeah, with edema on the surrounding tissues. Uh, there was limited uh, range of motions of his fingers on the effective, uh, affected extremity and decreased in sensations. For the cranial nerve exam, uh, um the uh, extraocular um the cranial nerves three four and six were intact um trigeminal nerve was not tested um 
the facial nerve uh, there were, for the facial nerve uh, there was no note of asymmetry facial asymmetry um patient was able to hear the interviewer thus um cranial nerve 8 was intact the patient was able to swallow for the cranial nerves 9 and 10 um able to shrug and turn his head from side to side and there was no tongue deviation um i couldn't um assess for the um, motor uh, strength of the patient. However, he was able to um, stand uh, unassisted. Um, thus, I scored the motor uh, strength to 3 over 5. So that's uh, just um, the maximum for gravity. Lang. Um, for the cerebellars, um, there was normal gait and the patient was able to ambulate. So for the salient features, um, we have a 67-year-old male, married, uh, had a forced retirement due to the pandemic, and um, wherein, his, wherein driving was his only profession his entire adult life. He presents with depressive symptoms, um, with somatic symptoms, also with comorbid medical condition. He has a pessimistic personality, easily discouraged, and had um, currently has suicidal ideations and attempt, and for and also had history of um, auditory hallucination and persecutory delusions. And for his childhood, he had an absentee father. Any questions po, um, at this point? Just pull it up on our camera. Okay. Uh, how about the marriage of his son? Was that significant I, or not? Yes, significant? Po, yes po, um, uh, also the, the recent um, marriage of his son, wherein he uh, moved out of the house, was also a significant um, event in the patient's. Um, life. Uh, may we know why it was significant to the patient? Um, his son has been living with them po for around four. Uh, since since his son is already thirty, in his late thirties, dog and um, uh, his his son was his um confidant po since um. Um, his younger child was um, dependent, um, entirely dependent to them, Doc. So um, his son was his uh, companion during um, uh, when when his son was was a child. He was his companion when he was um, uh, driving a jeepney. Um, also, when they were um, building their house, so. Um, it was a um, uh, for him. Um, although he was happy that his son was uh, marrying, uh, it was a loss for him. Po, though, that his son is not at home. Na po. Um, uh, I'm not really so loss in terms of loss of relationship. So the son no longer got in touch with the patient after getting married, does not visit? I uh, know he, he visits pa rin po because he would um, he would uh, provide, still provide for them financially po and he visits his mother and his um, sister po at home and also his uh, father. Uh, all right, so where is the sense of loss? Um, I have not clarified that with the patient. Yes. Of, um, okay. yes so kindly clarify because uh, yes. when I asked the meaning of his son's marriage and living home, yan yung dapat isipin. Ano ba? What was the issue? Well, what were the issues of the patient? Uh, was it financial? Was it the relationship? The feelings of loss? Of what? So, so that we can 
you can gauge whether this is a stressor or not for the patient. Uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Pat Doc. Uh, follow up. Yes, Pat. Uh, Camille, at what stage of family life cycle is the family right now? In what stage uh, of the family life cycle? Um, uh, um, this, uh, in this stage where in Tapos na sila um, sa launching, di ba? Or is, are they still in the launching stage? Uh, uh, they are still in the launching stage po, Doc. Um, his son uh, only recently married po. Nga is the son? Po, Doc. How old is the son? 37 na po, Doc. And the patient is 67 year old, right? Yes, po. So based on the Ericksonian theory, what are the developmental tasks that should be fulfilled at this stage? And is it, ano, parang, I am asking about the family life cycle. How would it affect you know, the uh, hand in hand? So how, why is there a conflict? Why did this patient, why is this patient predisposed? Connected kasi yun sa question ni Dr. Padilla. I'll um, explore more on that, Doc. But with regards um, the Ericksonian, um, uh, you call this in Ericksonian stage, po, uh, the patient is already at the um, integrity versus despair stage. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe the generativity stage was not fulfilled during um uh during prior product that's why there is a distress in um the patient yes um, where in his uh son is, uh, has already left home po. yes oh, oh correct but the question is like at what stage also in the family life cycle no? uh, uh, in what stage na ang family right now in the family life cycle kasi is this response no uh, expected from the patient na he would miss his son getting married Um, maybe the the patient um, uh, is also this experiencing an em em emptiness um, in syndrome, but uh, emptiness um, effect uh, because uh, of his son's leaving hope. Um, mm -hmm. However, in their family life cycle, um, they are already in uh, in uh, it's already expected for his um, supposedly in the leaving uh, or launching na po the the children so. Um, um, but uh, maybe I'll explore po that with the, the, the patient po, doc, as um, I was also not able to uh, clarify with him the, the cause for significance of um, his son sleeping during this. 
Mm, okay. Thank you. Sorry, po. Um, are there any more questions, po? So to continue, um, I'll uh, first discuss my differential diagnosis for this case. So um, uh, I considered um, uh, primary psychiatric conditions and also um, other organic causes to the depression to the patient's depressed mood. So for the organic causes, um, First, I considered mild neurocognitive disorder as 30% uh, uh, there is 30% incidence of depression in, in dementia. Uh, also, there is decline in the patient's executive function and also impairment in the patient's immediate memory. This was ruled out as um, he scored uh, poorly in the activities of daily living um, scale, uh, which I will be presenting also later in the course in the wards, um, which could uh, be attributed to a um, more severe um, neurocognitive disorder. However, um, a clock drawing test and uh, intersecting pentagon test was um, done as a um uh, to to test the patient's um they call it cognitive function and it was uh, uh there were there were no impairment um the poor test scores in the ADLs could be attributed to his depressive symptoms and um thus uh, mild neurocognitive disorder was ruled out for um, the major neurocognitive disorder, um, uh, there was significant cognitive decline in the executive function, um, particularly the poor impulse control and no task initiation. Um, he had impaired immediate memory uh, and had marked dependence in the instrumental activities of daily living. This was ruled out um, due to the um, there was no impairment in the clock drawing test and in intersecting pentagon test. And the decline in executive function could be explained by the cognitive problems in depression. Also, there were no notes from family of problems with memory until recently. However, um, I will rule out as of now um, the mild and major neurocognitive disorder, but uh, I will um, constantly check uh, on the patient's cognitive function as depression in the elderly could be a prodrome for uh, neurocognitive uh, problems. For the organic cause, uh, for other organic cause, um, there is also delirium. This was ruled in due to the presence of uncontrolled comorbid medical conditions. Um, I will be presenting also the patient's um, repeat laboratories later on, um, which revealed the renal problems and also the infectious process caused by his non healing wound. Um, also, there were problems with his memory. Um, however, this was ruled out as the patient had good attention. He was able to focus in conversation and able to sustain um, attention during the interviews. His disturbance is present uh, for approximately um, two years um, and uh, the patient was oriented and um, had unimpaired visuospatial ability um, as shown in his uh, in, in his uh, clock drawing test and um, intersecting pentagon test. Uh, symptoms are continuous and uh, not in a waxing waning um, presentation, thus delirium was ruled out. 
a depressive disorder due to another medical condition was also considered, uh, particularly um, uh, AMC, particularly uh, uncontrolled um, diabetes mellitus and a possible renal disorder. Um, this was ruled in because the patient fulfills a major depressive episode. Um, as mentioned earlier, there is note of uncontrolled um, type 2 diabetes mellitus um, and also probable um, uh, involvement of uh, renal problem and uh, the patient is yeah, um, oriented with no waxing and waning of symptoms and um, an impairment in function. So uh, delirium was uh, ruled out um, and, uh, uh, and the, the, the symptoms were continuous that thus a depressive disorder due to another medical condition was ruled in. Uh, however, um, as uh, the as I followed up on the patient, uh, the the diabetes mellitus has uh, was already controlled on his subsequent um, lab results. Um, however, the depressive symptoms persisted. Thus, um, this was uh, I. I ruled out a depressive disorder due to another medical condition at this point. For the psychiatric, primary psychiatric um, disorders that were considered, first was schizophrenia. Um, this was ruled in because of the presence of delusions, hallucinations, and a significant decrease in function. However, this was ruled out um, since the mood symptoms were noted prior to onset of psychotic symptoms. And um, the last uh, differential diagnosis is major depressive disorder. This was ruled in due to note of a depressed mood, um, irritability, uh, decreased interest in activities, hopelessness, weight loss, um, insomnia, uh, psychomotor retardation, his easy fatigability and loss of energy, his feelings of worthlessness, suicidal ideations and attempt, and uh, and um, uh, the the uh, presence of the cognitive triad of depression. Uh, there were no hypomanic episodes and um, depressed mood was noted uh, prior to onset of psychosis. Um, however, uh, medical conditions um, are still present um, and an infectious process is still ongoing. Um, thus, uh, uh, um, major, uh, I considered ruling out major depressive disorder, but um, uh, depression due to another medical condition, um, or, or rather the, the, the medical conditions are already um, being resolved or are resolving, thus um, I ruled in a major depressive disorder with psychotic so for the ICD-10 um, uh, coding, uh, it is a major depression, single episode, F32.9. For the biopsychosocial formulation, um, the patient is biological, biologically predisposed as he is an elderly, um, although females are more commonly diagnosed with depression, however, males have um, uh, are uh, are more uh, uh, are known to be uh, to have a more um, uh, problems with with um, suicide attempts, um, wherein they have more um, complete uh, they uh, 
uh, they have more suicide completion than females. Um, he had chronic alcohol use, which could have led to malnutrition, um, which decreases um, uh, this, um, uh, which decreases the uh, supply of um, neurotransmitters. Uh, also, his medical condition uh, is also a predisposing biological factor. For his psychological um, predisposing factor, um, uh, patient... Uh, Questions? Has, yes, Paul. Will you be explaining uh, how this medical condition has affected his... Ano, uh, the, pre, uh, the, ano, the psychiatric diagnosis. Um, uh, yes, but doc. Um, uh, diabetes mellitus has a um, call this. Um, patients having diabetes mellitus has more um, uh, is more likely to have uh, di uh, depression. Um, due to uh, first um, uncontrolled um, sugar in the body, which could lead to uh, an in inflammatory process, which could increase the cortisol levels in the the, the body and uh, would um, then decrease uh, the serotonin levels. Thus, um, uh, thus uh, this would. Uh, predispose the patient to having a depressive episode or um, uh, more uh, neurotransmitter dysregulation. Um, um, also, uh, inflammatory processes uh, from his um, wound, which is still unhealed, um, and um, disability caused by it. Um, causes uh, further increase in the stress levels of the patient, uh, thus further decreasing uh, serotonin um, supply. Um, however, the initiation of pharmacotherapy is a protecting uh, protective factor biologically, uh, as well as. Um, yes, make them, yeah. Yes. Um, oh, no. Yeah, you you were talking about predisposing factors, biologic. Yes. Uh -oh. So I... later na lang yung protecting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, ang suggestion, my suggestion is when you talk about the biologic aspect, especially for like for example diabetes mellitus, uh, it would be best if you explain the relationship of insulin, uh, beta cells of the pancreas and serotonin. So, or sa insulin, uh, serotonin metabolism, uh, may ano ba? May sharing ba sila with insulin metabolism? So that you will actually have a parang clearer explanation of why diabetes is related to depression. So, sige na lang. Uh, after this, please kindly read it up for your added information. That's all the so called being about the biologic aspect. Yes, but thank you for that. Uh, and of course, sorry. And of course, uh, it was not mentioned what was the antibiotic given for the wound. So please check if the antibiotic given will uh, has psychiatric side effects, which may worsen the, the depressive episode. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. So, um, to continue, uh, so for the um, psychological predisposing factors, a patient has insecure attachment uh, brought about by his um, social, uh, by his absentee father, um, which uh, brought about a pessimistic personality and also uh, his low self-esteem. Um, 
for the social predisposing factors, uh, his non uh, his uh, non existent um, relationship with his father is a predisposing factor, um, and also their poor social economic status. For the precipitating factor, um, biologically, as um, I have mentioned earlier, uh, the uncontrolled sugar um, can cause inflammatory processes, um, thus causing uh, further neurotransmitter dysregulation. Um, I will... Um, uh, yeah. um, this is... Uh, uh, connected psychologically as uh, the patient experiences uh, stress uh, due to uh, or rather the, the increase in cortisol to also be uh, explained by um, the current stressors the patient is having uh, caused by his, um, the, his son's departure from their home and also from his forced retirement from his job. Um, this causes uh, um, lowering of his self-esteem and also um, problems uh, in his life stage wherein uh, he is already at the integrity versus despair stage. Um, for the perpetuating factors, uh, biologically, the uh, continued neurotransmitter dysregulation and also um, inflammatory processes caused by the non-healing wound and um, the disability brought about by um, by the, the uh, by, by this um, causes um, self-stigma uh, which furthers which further um, uh, which further brings the patient to a, a negative um, thought or perception of himself, um, also his future and, and his environment. Um, social stigma uh, due to his uh, suicide attempt, which he often hears from um, his neighbors, uh, causes also um, more uh, stress uh, causes him more stress rather and uh, the continued covid pandemic um, is a precipitating and perpetuating factor for the protective factors uh, initiation of pharmacotherapy um, and as well as control of comorbid medical conditions are biological protective factors, his resilience and his insight, although still partial, are psychological um, protective factors. And for the social um, protective factors, uh, his immediate family, uh, particularly his wife and children, who are very supportive of him, as well as his extended family, um, particularly his daughter-in-law and um, uh, si sisters and brothers-in-law from his, yeah, uh, sisters and brother-in-law. Yeah, okay. And also, um, uh, IPBM is also a social protective factor. So... Here is my attempt to a uh, psychodynamic formulation for this patient. So, uh, Mario's low self-esteem and uh, pessimistic way of thinking may be rooted to an insecure attachment style due to the absence of a father figure in his childhood. Although his mother provides for him both in affection and finances, seeks a sense of belongingness in his um, in a male figure and uh, saw this in his peers. And um, he... Uh, also saw this in um, by creating a path for himself, which he found in his profession, which was uh, being a driver. During his adult life, him be being a driver has been the only constant, um, uh, constant, and this may have provided him a sense of fulfillment 
as this was given as this has given him the opportunity to provide for his family and has been his way to show um which has been his way to show affection to them uh, when he was forced to retire sense of purpose also vanished which led to despair in this stage of his life so um during the first OPD consult, um, my uh, primary impression for this patient was major depressive disorder with psychotic features to consider minor and major neurocognitive disorder and also to consider, sorry, this is a depressive de de uh, depression secondary to another medical condition, uncontrolled uh, diabetes mellitus type 2 and in infectious process um, due to a non-healing wound. For the short-term plan, um, first is control of comorbid conditions. So, a repeat diagnosis were uh, diagnostics were requested, which include uh, the following: first, uh, CBC with platelet count, uh, liver function test, uh, renal um, renal function test. Um, uh, I also requested for FDS and HbA1c to monitor for the control of his um, diabetes and also ECG as um, he has uh, to check to have a baseline um, of his cardiac functions. Uh, maintenance medications and antibiotic medications were uh, continued as prescribed by his uh, physician. Um, also, um, uh, since, excuse me, uh, Camille. Can you can you tell us the maintenance medications and antibiotics given at this point? Um, for the maintenance ma medications, doc. Um, for his diabetes, it was linagdipin at. 5 milligrams per day and also diclacide uh, 60 milligrams per day. For the antibiotic product, he was given um, coamoxiclav and also a other one. Um, uh, I forgot the other antibiotic doc, but um, it was uh, uh, macrolide po. Um, I, I forgot the, the exact um, uh, antibiotic doc, but uh, they were um, uh, parang two antibiotic medications yung binigay doc plus um, silicoxid po for the pain and for the swelling. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, also, since the hey, patient had... Follow-up yes, question. Why is Dr. Padilla asking uh, what are the ant antibiotics given to the patient? Thank you, um, Beth. There, uh, there are <laughs> antibiotics for that can um, cause uh, so this... Um, a Depressive episodes po, uh, and also psychotic episodes in patients. Um, one known po is uh, ciprofloxacin and also cifixime. Uh, but uh, you forgot the antibiotics given. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry okay. about that, Doc. So you need to know from yes. the very beginning. Since you you are ruling out uh, other condition, other ano, parang conditions that could have contributed, no. Wedding ang pharmacology, wedding maka affect ang gamot. That's all. Thank you for, for that reminder, Padok. Um, to continue, uh, since the patient had a previous suicide attempt. Suicide risk assessment was done and also safety planning 
um, for his um, for the suicide um, for for his suicide uh, risk assessment. Um, uh, here are his uh, suicide risk factors. So um, the patient had a prior attempt, had a stressful life event, has a physical illness, he is unemployed, and has advancing age. For the acute um, risk factors, um, still with suicidal ideations, uh, purposelessness, insomnia, and hopelessness. Um, for the protective factors, the patient is married and has children and um, has interpersonal support. So um, if we uh, factor the, these in, uh, I consider the patient to be at the moderate um, suicide risk, uh, wherein um, thus, uh, these steps or these plans were discussed with the family. So, um, his follow ups were um, reiterated that uh, they, they or follow up schedules uh, with um, me and also their um, uh, phys uh, medical uh, physician for his medical condition was. Um, reiterated that they should follow up. Um, the family has been um, psychoeducated with regards um, support for the patient. A uh, means restriction, so all um, possible uh, sharps or um, any uh, um, items at home that can be used for suicide should be um, removed. Uh, they are advised to come to IPBM um, if there if the the thoughts uh, kept um, uh, or if the thoughts uh, continue to linger or um, if an attempt is considered already. Um, uh, the medications for his mood uh, symptoms have been continued as was previously prescribed. Um, and also, yeah, uh, th this was um, uh, the seventh item was also, um, uh, uh, this was also, um, been discussed. This has also been discussed to them, uh, wherein there could be a possibility of hospitalization if um, the risk for suicide increased. Also, for the control of his um, symptoms, um, since uh, uh, call this, since uh, there was. Um, I was still considering um, uh, depressive, uh, depressive disorder due to another medical condition, and um, the the medical condition, particularly his uh, diabetes and also uh, the infectious process caused by his non-healing wound, uh, was still uh, not assessed during that time or I had no um, evidence that it was already um, controlled. Thus, uh, the osotalopram was, um, was uh, maintained at 5 milligrams per day at this time and plans to increase once the lab results are already in. Um, uh, they were advised to follow up once with the ones the lab re results uh, have already um, uh, once they have the lab results uh, also since the patient was complaining of um, of sleep problems uh, clonazepam was adjusted to one milligram per day uh, for relief of his insomnia 
Uh, during the second OPD consult, oh, this was... Excuse me, Camille. Excuse me. Can you go back to the previous slide? Okay, so there was... Uh, you have to increase uh, to one milligram clonazepam for relief. Uh, increase acetalopram. Uh, what was the previous dose of acetalopram? Five milligrams for dose. Uh, at half tab only? Yes, half Once tab. Once with repeat. Ah, uh, okay. Sige. Okay. Thank you. Oh, so, by the way, uh, how is the soft consent of your patient? He still had Wait. suicidal ideations for the book. Um, he, uh, he, he was more preoccupied now with his sleep. Um, his, uh, Problems with voiding has been resolved na po, so there was no problems with that. But um, he was also worried about his wound po during this time. So so it's not his worries that's making him having insomnia? Um, or his ruminations about wanting to die? That's not the one causing the insomnia? Uh, he he did say though that um, he would often uh, think about those things uh, when he is resting. But uh, even if um, he wants to to sleep during his uh, during uh, shesta time, though uh, he would still have difficulties um, even if he is not thinking about um, his. Uh, worries. All right. So you mentioned about the presence of delusions and hallucinations. Is that correct? Uh, yes. So how did the, you address that? Um, the patient already. The, the patient had uh, was already started though uh, with olanzapine at five milligrams per tablets. Uh, it was during this time I continued with the current dose. Po muna doc. So, ah, okay. So yung it would be best if you include everything that you, you are giving the patient for pharmacologic. Yes. So the patient, well, it, at this time, the patient was on clonazepam, one milligram per day, escitalopram at five milligrams per day, and olanzapine at five milligrams per day yes. at this yes. point. Okay. Yes, and also, please explain why you opted to start with a low dose of escitalopram. So what is the rationale? Um, the patient was already on these medications. For doc. I opted to continue with the dose at this point um, and wait for the lab results for, to come in. I was planning on um, uh, shifting the olanzapine to another antipsychotic medications if the the um the the sugar was still not controlled and also i um i wanted to see um a baseline labs po muna before increasing the acetalopram what were you expecting um particularly doc with um ecg and also with um um since the the patient had been a uh, chronic uh, alcohol drinker uh, there there may be problems with uh, liver function uh, with the uh, uh, diabetes uh, probable problems with renal function also for the, although acetalopram is uh, safe uh, considered safe for to, to be given in the uh, in in patients with uh, comorbids i opted to uh, be on the safe side for doc and to um, wait for the labs first. Aside from the ECG, you know, what are the things that you have to check for in the laboratory? Um, I should have had um, requested for, doc, for electrolytes. Uh, that is something that I missed. Um, since um, escitalopram could um, affect uh, sodium. Um, also, what else? 
At saka, uh, another question, no, Camille, uh, so for how long na ba yung olanzapine ng patient? Um, the patient has been on olanzapine po do for approximately two weeks prior to okay. up, prior to me seeing him po. And escitalopram? Also two weeks po do. Did you see any adverse effect? Um, or did you see uh, any improvement since the patient was already started on olanzapine and escitalopram and still you um, opted to be at a low dose of escitalopram? Yes po. Uh, for the mood po, it remained, um, uh, there was no improvement noted. However, with the auditory hallucinations po doc, um, it uh, uh, the patient denied it at the time I saw him. Uh, however, the, there were still persecutory delusions po during that time. Okay, so what would you expect also no, from escitalopram? How would it affect the blood picture of the patient? Uh, how would it affect the pardon? Bad the picture. What what possible adverse effect would you watch out for in escitalopram? Uh, uh, what I uh, remember, Doc, is more on the um, electrolyte um, uh, imbalance. Po. Uh, it can affect, uh, as I've mentioned, the sodium levels of the patient. Um, okay, I think uh, uh, you can read more on the pharmacology of um, escitalopram. Uh, just uh, an additional question lang. Uh, considering that this patient is diabetic, is olanzapine the best choice? Um, I, I was considering po um, shifting to ipiprazole po to, um, to uh, so that um, there will be less uh, cardiometabolic uh, side effects so for the patient since he has a comorbid uh, diabetes mellitus. So why did you just continue uh, continue the uh, lancetine? Um, since um, in 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 hindsight, po doc, I should have um, shifted already, and um, but I was uh, I was very uh, call this uh, reluctant to uh, change uh, the the antipsychotic and the SSRIs during this time, doc, without um, without seeing the the uh, lab results of the patient. Uh, so this one was ordered without checking for the labs. You don't know that the patient was diabetic pala? Um, th this was previously started na po kasi doc. Uh, hindi ko na lang po muna gi, uh, from, from another psychiatrist. Camille, uh, Camille. Yes, boss. my question was, you did not know that the patient was diabetic when you considered continuing olanzapine? Um, I already uh, had the information po, doc, that the patient was diabetic. Okay, probably you should check what's the best. Kasi, di ba, uh, if, we, if we continue olanzapine but you were thinking of shifting Yung washout period at saka yung period wherein the 
the levels of the new antipsychotic medication will reach its achieved concentration. You should also think of the time. Na? So, yun na ang gusto kong ano, yung rationality of giving medications and shifting and when to shift. So, that's all. Thank you. Addition sa ano, comment. But just to, to guide you, Camille, no? so what have you read on the effect of escitalopram no? on the blood picture or WBC of patients, especially with major depression? Uh, so there are some studies no, that would you know, uh, conclude that it could affect the lymphocyte count. So considering that uh, your patient is immunocompromised, has diabetes, no, do you think escitalopram is the drug of choice? Um, uh, yes, but, um, I sh um, that should have been also part of the consideration for the, um, um, at this point for I, uh, consider continuing, um, escitalopram, um, and uh, rather increasing it on on the next follow up, uh, since uh, uh, because of its availability for the um the cost for the patient and also um uh, mostly yun po yung yung reasons ko po for for choosing uh, with uh, sticking with uh, acetalopram for this patient. Oh, so okay, so it's not only ECG that you have to check, no? It's a blood picture you monitor the WBC also. Because there are some studies that would say you no, know, it can increase or decrease the lymphocyte, no? Although this is not conclusive, but this is something that you have to watch out for. Yes, but noted on that book. To continue on the patient's uh, second OPD consult, um, he had good compliance to medications. He had improved improved sleep with the medications. Um, he was still preoccupied with worries about uh, things at home, um, and would is easily still get irritable um, and annoyed with noise from people outside. Uh, or from neighbors, rather. So um, the patient was well groomed, um, with short hair, wearing a blue T-shirt and pants. He had a uh, psychomotor retardation. A patient was had depressed mood with appropriate affect. Uh, had low tone of voice, but still audible and comprehensible. A decreased libido. Uh, already with good sleep and appetite, uh, denies perceptual disturbances, um, was linear and goal-oriented. Uh, at this uh, follow-up, he denied suicidal ideations. Um, attempted to do a mental, mini mental status exam, um, but the patient um, refused uh, further uh, Call this testing as and claim that he didn't know the answers. Um, however, was able to um, test for PHQ nine at this point, which um, uh, uh, wherein he scored twenty one uh, or uh, severe depression. For the lab results, um, the 
your analysis was um, uh, the your analysis was um, normal except for the microalbumin uh, in the urine, um, which could be indicative of um, renal dysfunction. Um, creatinine was at 150 um, and uh, with a corresponding hemoglobin of 87. So the, I considered um, a chronic kidney disease at this point. Uh, the patient's glucose levels, the FDS was low at 3.48, but his HbA1c was 6.2, indicating that um, he had good control um, of his sugar. Uh, the liver function tests, uh, particularly SGPT and SGOT were elevated. However, um, these are still considered um, uh, uh, rather um, we consider uh, abnormalities with liver function if there is a, 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 if it is elevated three times um, from the normal uh, values. So uh, I considered this uh, the SGPT and SGOT as um, um, okay. Uh, the ECG was normal. Sorry, I was not able to. Um, for the assessment, uh, the patient um, at this point has major depressive disorder to consider minor and major neurocognitive disorder. Um, diabetes type 2 controlled to consider chronic kidney disease secondary to um, diabetic nephropathy uh, versus anemia secondary to poor intake and malnutrition. For the management, uh, increase the acetalopram to 10 milligrams per day. Um, the olanzapine um, was continued at half tablet and clonazepam was um, start uh, was uh, decreased to PRN for sleep. Um, he was uh, they were advised to follow up with their internist regarding possible uh, CKD and um, uh, medications and management for it and also um, to orthopedics regarding his wound. Um, they were advised to follow up um, uh, with psychiatry after two weeks and safety planning was reiterated. So um, for the choice in medications, um, uh, uh, based on the CANMAT recommendations, the aduloxetine is superior as first-line treatment for late-life depression with level 1 evidence as compared to um, uh, the, the treatment of choice um, at this uh, for this patient, uh, which was acetalopram with um, uh, level 3 or 4 evidence. However, it is still considered first-line treatment, um, but um, it was chosen due to the availability, uh, the tolerability, and the safety profile. Um, as, patient, as the patient has financial difficulties, uh, choosing a medication that is not available at IPBM may cause non-adherence to pharmacotherapy. Thus, um, acetalopram was um, continued rather than uh, shifting to uh, doloxetine, which has um, level one evidence of so for the third um, OPD consult, the patient uh, had uh, good compliance to medications with improved sleep, noted to increase activities at home, wherein he would help out with household chores like taking out the trash or sweeping the floor. Um, he complained of constipation, um, had decreased food intake uh, during this time as he was afraid that it would exacerbate his constipation. Um, he had follow-up with their uh, 
surgeon uh, with their private um, surgeon and antibiotic medications were already discontinued. Uh, wound is um, healing but uh, still with swelling on ad adjacent tissues. He was seen uh, during this time by a, a teleconsult. Uh, he was well-groomed, wearing a red t-shirt and shorts, and lying in his usual spot at, at their living room. He had he still had depressed mood with appropriate affect, moderately soft tone of voice. He denied perceptual disturbances and also um, uh, uh, delusions at this time. He was preoccupied uh, since his uh, sleep was already okay. He was now preoccupied with constip his constipation. Um, he was oriented to three spheres. Um, and was able to name objects such as swatch and pen. He had passive suicidal ideations wherein he would uh, pray that he could um, uh, already rest, but um, has also has regrets um, of uh, his past suicide attempt. Uh, he regrets doing it, rather. Um, he had an impaired judgment and partial insight. Um, he was aware of his problems but was unwilling to come in for face-to-face -face consult since he was afraid um, that he would get in an accident en route as he uh, needed to ride a motorcycle going to the hospital. So um, uh, we discussed this um, uh, further and we uh, agreed that uh, his follow-ups could uh, be done by a uh, uh, tele teleconsultation um, in his future in the future. So um, the draw a clock test was um, performed, and also the intersecting um, Pentagon test, which shows. Um, uh, Are normal. So, um, also the instrumental activities of daily living scale was um, uh, I had the family score this. However, in hindsight, um, I should have used another tool as uh, the patient was um, does not do shopping, laundry, or other um, activities um, at home. So this um, scale may not have been uh, the, be the, the most appropriate for him at this time. Uh, for the assessment, uh, major depressive disorder, still um, considering depressive disorder due to another medical condition, a diabetes mellitus type 2 controlled uh, to consider chronic kidney disease secondary to a diabetes mellitus type 2 versus anemia secondary to poor intake. And also, uh, a constipation uh, probably secondary to um, medications, particularly I'm thinking more of um, alanzapine at this time causing um, the constipation too. So, um, since the, the, there is improvement in the patient's functions, um, um, however, um, it's still not um, at optimal, um, I decided to increase the citalopram to 15 milligrams per day. Uh, we decreased the olanzapine to one-fourth tablet um, once a day at HS and the clonazepam was um, still given a half tablet as needed for his sleep. Um, uh, we negotiated uh, or rather I negotiated with the patient to continue follow up and his, uh, his uh, mode of follow up, uh, his choice for his follow up was to virtual consultation. That's why um, we agreed to continue on um, telepsychiatry as 
to uh, we agreed on telepsychiatry as his mode of um, consult. Uh, a referral letter uh, since the 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 son was um, uh, was already uh, had problems also financially um, and they were thinking of um, consulting with internal medicine and orthopedics at SPMC however um, the patient was reluctant to to go face to face uh, to, to have his checkup face to face thus uh, I, I advised the uh, teleconsult platform of SPMC and a referral letter was given to them to IM for um, continued um, management of his uh, diabetes and for um, uh, evaluation of a possible uh, kid chronic kidney disease and to orthopedics for uh, evaluation of his wound as um, he, he had already problems with um, the range in motion of the affected hand and also there was decrease in um, the uh, um, perception uh, in the affected hand also. So um, I plan on uh, referring also to physical therapy. Um, safety planning was still reiterated and um, I am uh, planning to start the patient on cognitive behavioral therapy, uh, which I am still studying for a, uh, for this for a tarang online platform. Po. I, th there are already um, studies or uh, with regard CBT done virtually, uh, which I need to um, to read more on rather um, before uh, starting and. Um, also to to control more on his um, symptoms before um, psychotherapy is initiated. Camille, I have a question. Yes, Pa. Uh, uh, since the patient has a lot of issues regarding, you know, parang fulfilling the different developmental tasks, so do you think at this point CBT would be effective? Um. I was uh well, my focus po doc is more on his um yung negative na na cognitive uh, cognition niya po kasi doc so um that's why I was uh, considering CBT first po doc uh, Camille to guide you uh ano yung do you have a list of your goals for ano, psychotherapy, psychotherapeutic? Yung mga, ano yung gusto mong mangyari? Um, yung ano po, Dok? Um, um, sa ngayon po, Dok, um, I'm, ay, yung, yung plans ko po is to focus on the the uh, yung negative perception po ng patient sa sarili niya and also to find um, other means of um, yung sense uh, na, na makakita siya ng other means of fulfill yung, yung fulfillment po doc um, aside from um, yung, yung occupation niya as a driver po uh, Sige, Beth. I, in my opinion at this point no CBT will not be that effective because you need to address first no the issues underlying issues it doesn't have money diba uh, yung sense of self worth niya is uh, very poor uh, how about ano parang uh, at this point, I think you have to rethink and reconsider 
no uh, in connection with doctor what doctor padilla told you so you have to identify first what are your ano uh, uh, psychotherapeutic goals for this patient before really deciding na ano cbt agad siya Thank you, Pop Doc. And then, what is the educational payment of this patient? Uh, high school undergraduate for help. Okay, so what is the uh, your requirement for CBT in terms of cognition? Um, Cognitive ability. So, di ba may mga requirements? So, did the patient fit uh, the requirements uh, so that CBT will be successful? I'll, I'll review on it, though. At this point, I... Okay, so whatever therapeutic interventions you, you plan, always think of yung pinaka priority na anong kailangan ng patient. Second, uh, what kind of therapeutic intervention you want to do and why? And is the patient a candidate for the psychotherapeutic intervention you want to do? Huh? Tapos, when you think of the problem list of your patient, you think holistic siya, sarili niya, tapos yung mga stressors niya, environment, so that you will, you will also choose ano yung pinaka-best for now, for now, ngayon, na immediate, na you, you can actually help the patient with yung mga immediate needs niya. So, uh, 67 years old man ito, no? Yes, Tama. Okay, six seven. Awesome. I suggest uh, this is a good, I know, uh, this is a good patient for you to practice your psychotherapy. I suggest you have this supervised. Yes, Thank you. Thank you. For a 67 year old, how malleable is the mind no, to accept the CBT process? So maybe it's something that you have to consider also. Thank you for that. I will consider those. So, um, for a uh, telepsychiatry in the uh, in geriatric care, um, um, according to Gentry, um, in his systematic review and policy considerations with regards to geriatric telepsychiatry. Um, this is potential to increase access to geriatric specialists uh, such as um, uh, psychiatry also um, has, uh, has shown to reduce travel times for patients and providers and reduce uh, ever-growing healthcare costs. Um, also, uh, the American Psychiatric, uh, Psychiatric Association um, has noted or has published that um, telepsychiatry and geriatric care has has satisfaction rather um, uh, is superior for patients, families, and caregivers and providers. And a variety of disorders have been effectively treated um, in this population. So starting with depression and extending to anxiety, dementia, or cognitive impairment, and also with other difficult behavioral problems such as agitation. A geriatric telepsychiatry has been primarily done to medical inpatient, primary care, and outpatient psychiatric settings. So it has been a um, uh, 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 mode for, our, for the geriatric population um, to 
access their caregiver uh, their their um, um, medical uh, to access medical care um, in this population. Um, here are uh, some telepsychiatry considerations that we should um, consider. Uh, Pre-visit accounting of general events and the patient's attitude, comments, complaints, sources of information, and clinician observation is helpful. Um, the clinician examine uh, the clin clinical examination rather may require staff assistance particularly if a patient is delirious, combative, or agitated, or suffers from aphasia, poor hearing, or vision impairment. Um, they particularly uh, um, uh, uh, we, um, I should give emphasis, uh, emphasis that um, they have given a staff assistance for um, those patients or elderlies in um, in uh, patient care or facilities. Um, however, we can also um, tap family members for patients um, who are staying at home um, to assist us in the clinical examination of patients. For the physical exam, camera control at the far end enables easy wide angle, close up, and focused viewing of to detect tremors, microphagia, and other psychomotor symptoms. However, staff may need to be trained to check for extra pyramidal side effects like cogwheel rigidity. Um, there is uh, uh, there is um already studies with regards telepsychiatry for geriatric population, specifically in inpatient and also um, in, in, in the elderly uh, living um, in facilities. However, for patients who are in the community, um, this, there is limited information um, with regards um, telepsychiatry. Um, for them. Um, there are barriers uh, that were um, noted uh, in literature um, with regards to telemedicine in, as a whole, and not just telepsychiatry. So uh, first is the technical, um, if there is a presence of a technically challenged staff or a technically challenged um, family member, our uh, resistance to change um, for for facilities or for for um, patients the cost um, and reimbursement so uh, there may um, in in other countries um, telepsychiatry or telemedicine still has um, parang, um, the reimbursement in their um, uh, in their medical um, insurance is still um, not established. So there may be, although there is a decreased cost with regards to the transportation of the patient, um, however, the, the cost for the medications, etc., could um, also be a hindrance part, uh, since it is not covered by healthcare. Um, the age of the patient could also be a barrier. So um, the level and also the level of education of the patient. That's it. So um, although telepsychiatry is already um, uh, being has been used um, before the pandemic and had. Um, an increase in the the consults via via um, telepsychiatry during and um, during the pandemic. Um, however, uh, this is still um, in 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 our institution. This is still um, something that we need to develop on, as we had we we just started 
on the telepsychiatry service in in at IPBM. So um, there are there is much to be learned and much to develop with regards with regards this service. So um, yeah, um, each I think each uh, patient that we see uh, via telepsychiatry is a learning experience for not only for me but also for um, other residents as well. So um uh, that ends my um presentation so i leave you with this quote uh, if we don't take the steering wheel of our life in our hands uh, then someone else will sit on the driver's seat um however it takes courage to let go and admit the team helping steering so um good day everyone thank you for listening Do we have any additional questions, clarifications? Not now. Uh, this is a good case to be supervised by your CL consultant, siguro rin. I agree, though. Um, if there are no more questions or clarifications, good day, everyone, for the, uh, for the consultants. Um, please do uh, the scoring in the, I already sent it in the chat. Thank you and good day everyone. Thank you for doctors. Thank you, Doc. Thank you and good day. Thank you for uh, Piet, not a meeting for the PGC. Hi, good morning, Dr. Pinignos and Dr. Laganao. Uh, so we will be using this link for, doc, for our post-grad uh, course meeting. Po. Thank you. Uh, Other interns may involve. So. Okay, Pete, can we start now? Dr. Dr. Beninas, is it okay to start? Good morning, Doc. I think, I think Dr. Beninas went out. Po. I message po namin, Ah, uh, Okay. <laughs> Hello, Mike. Uh, can you give us the post na post sa amin siya? Thank you. Host? Host? No? Oh, ikaw kasi yung host niya. Sa iyo doon kayo. Message ko sila pwede. Hi, Doc. We'll wait for Dr. Benignos lang also for Doc. 